little later on. In the meantime, let's go straight to Ed Miliband in Manchester. Doing a great job they did. Now, friends, in just 100 days' time, you, your friends and neighbours will join with people all over the country to decide our future as a nation. Will we be a country in which everyday working people can get ahead and have real hope for their children and their future? Will we build a prosperity that extends from the city of London to kitchen tables right across Britain? Or will we carry on down the Tory path in which an ever-shrinking circle of people do well while everyone else is forced to work harder and harder just to keep up with the bills and the weekly shop. These are the choices of this election. And today I want to address one critical dimension of that choice, and that is the future of our National Health Service. Because in this election, the British people get to decide who you can trust with your health care and our National Health Service. And today I ask you to think hard about the choices on offer. Our country's most precious institution faces, I believe, its most perilous moment in a generation. And it is a choice of two futures, carrying on with a Conservative plan, which has already led to an NHS in crisis and threatens the service as we know it, or a Labour plan to rescue our NHS, invest in its future and join up services from home to hospital. Friends, that is what we are fighting for in this general election. That's why we need to elect a Labour government. <laughs> just, just think about what has happened to our NHS in just five short years. And think of what Danny, Allison and Liz have said to you today. People in their 70s and 80s who have waited hour after hour for an ambulance to arrive, even when they're in desperate need. Patients stuck outside the hospital in ambulances because they can't get into A&E. Seriously ill people lying for hour after hour on trolleys waiting to be treated. People unable to see their GP, sometimes with queues round the block. I think as we stand here today, we can say we never thought we would go back to those days. But under David Cameron, in just five years, we have. We will hold him responsible for what has happened, and the British people will hold him responsible too. <laughs> and it's not just people waiting longer in A&E, is it? It's waiting longer to get vital tests, waiting longer to get your operation. You know, nearly half of the patient guarantees in the NHS constitution have been broken. From the right to start your cancer treatment within two months to the right to get your operation within 18 weeks. And doctors, nurses, so many NHS staff, as Danny said, the heroes of our health service rushed off their feet. It is an NHS without enough time to care. And of course, it's a total betrayal of what David Cameron promised at the last election. Just remember what he said at the last election and then look at what has happened. He promised, and I quote, no more of those pointless top-down reorganisations that promise change and instead bring chaos. And then he spent billions on a top-down reorganisation that brought chaos and the NHS is still reeling from today. The British people will hold him responsible for this broken promise. You know, he stood outside hospitals. He stood outside hospitals with a sign saying, no cuts, no closures. And then he closed the very same accident and emergency department. Again, the British people will hold him responsible for this broken promise. And he said, he would say he would never allow us to go back, and again I quote, to those days when people had to wait for hours on end to be seen in accident and emergency. And that is exactly what's happened. And once again, people will hold him responsible for breaking his promise. Promises matter. And because of his promises, because of his broken promises, what tuition fees is for Nick Clegg, the NHS has become for David Cameron. This is a question of trust. And just think, if this is what happened in just five years, 
we have a duty to point out the consequences of another five years of Conservative government. And you don't need to imagine it. You just need to look at one clear manifesto commitment they have to cut public spending as a share of our national income back to the levels of the 1930s before there was a national health service. Now, David Cameron says he cares about the NHS, but that isn't enough because there's no country in the world that runs a world-class healthcare system like our NHS with spending like that. And we know too he'll press on with plans to fragment and privatise the NHS. More focus on private patients, more private contracts awarded, more fragmentation of the service. And all it means is that people will wait longer and longer for care. Forced to go private if you want timely treatment. The thing is, David Cameron won't put the right resources into our NHS and he'll put the wrong values at the heart of our NHS. So when you look at his record for the last five years and his plan for the next five years, you know David Cameron can't be trusted with our National Health Service. That's why the choice at this election matters so much. That's why we need a Labour government. <laughs> So Britain needs a new plan for our National Health Service. A plan not just to protect it, but to improve it for years to come. To make sure we build an NHS that meets the challenges of the 21st century. Now, later this morning, the Shadow Secretary of State for Health, Andy Burnham, is going to be explaining our plan in more detail. But the central idea that I want to share with you today is this. That we must both invest in the NHS so it has time to care, and we've got to join up services at every stage from home to hospital so that people can get the care they need when they need it. That is the key principle to make our NHS sustainable and successful for years to come. And I want to outline the fundamentals of that plan for you today. It starts, of course, with the need to invest. And we're the only party whose plans are fully funded, costed and based on the right principle that those with the broadest shoulders should bear the greatest burden. So we'll raise over a billion pounds from tax avoidance, including from the hedge funds. We'll raise extra revenue from the tobacco companies. And yes, we will use the proceeds of our mansion tax on properties worth over £2 million to fund our National Health Service. It is the right principle for our country. And we'll use those resources for a plan to train and hire more doctors, nurses, care workers and mid midwives so they all have the one thing that patients need most, an NHS with time to care. And here's the important thing. This investment won't be for an NHS that stands still. It's for an NHS that moves with the times and keeps up with the challenges of the 21st century. The thing I've learned most of all, talking to people in the NHS, and we've heard it again this morning, is that the most important principle is the success of what goes on inside a hospital depends on what happens outside in the community. So when people can't get to see their GP, they end up in A&E, and it adds to the problems there. When problems with mental health aren't spotted early at school or work, they build up and people end up in hospital. And most importantly of all, and we all know this from our own family experiences, when elderly people can't get the care they need at home, they're much more likely to struggle, grow ill, or have a fall. In each and every case, failing to act early is worse for the person involved and involves greater costs for the National Health Service. So the most important principle of 21st century healthcare is that people get the care at the right time and in the right place, and that's what our plan does. We'll end the scandal of neglecting mental health by prioritising investment in young people and ensuring teachers are trained early to spot problems. We'll hire more doctors and save resources on privatisation and competition and end the scandal of people having to wait days, even weeks, for a GP appointment. And we will use the resources we raise to hire 5,000 new care workers, a new arm of the NHS, to help elderly people stay in their own home. And because we'll be putting in place one system of health and social care, we will end what I believe is a scandal, which is care visits restricted to just 15 minutes.
And if we're going to build an NHS that meets the challenges of the 21st century and sustain funding for it throughout these, this century, we cannot leave parents unable to get a GP appointment for their sick child or neglect mental health or restrict social care visits to the most vulnerable to just 15 minutes. We'll end these scandals not just because they have no place in a world-class health service, but because no responsible government can afford to ignore them. And we can only meet this central challenge of the 21st century to join up these services. And we all know this when we have the right values at the heart of our NHS. I'll tell you what I think makes our NHS work best. Care, compassion, cooperation, not competition, fragmentation and privatisation. You see, you, see, this, you see, this government believes, this government really believes that by setting hospital against hospital, service against service, a creeping fragmentation and privatisation, the NHS will get better. But it's failed. And I'll tell you why it's failed. Because if joining up services is the key challenge of 21st century healthcare, integration, then the Tory solution can't be the answer. Because privatisation and fragmentation is the opposite of the integration that we need. These aren't the values of our National Health Service. These aren't the values of this Labour Party. These aren't the values of the British people. And we will put an end to these values when we repeal this government's terrible health and social care act. And it's because we're determined to build an NHS fit for the future that we can announce our third election pledge here today. If we win the general election in May, the next Labour government will build an NHS with time to care. 20,000 more nurses and 8,000 more GPs. Joining up services from home to hospital. Guaranteeing GP appointments within 48 hours and cancer tests within one week. An NHS for our nation's future. And an NHS that is better for patients, better for staff and better for all of us. Now, you know, here in Trafford, we're just down the road from the first hospital to open as an NHS hospital when the service was founded in July 1948. The first hospital to offer every citizen the best health care based on need, not ability to pay. We all, everybody in this room, everybody in this country has their own memories of the NHS. The place where our children were born, where we got better when we were sick, where our parents and grandparents were cared for when they fell ill or got older. But our NHS cannot just simply become a memory. I believe this truth more than any other. The NHS was the right principle for our grandparents' generation. And it is the right principle for our grandchildren's generation as well. And you know, it fell to those after the Second World War to build the NHS. It fell to Labour in 1997 to save it from years of neglect. It now falls to us to protect and improve it once again.